Hello and welcome to session three out of four from the Data Migration Demystified webinar series. Today it's about ensuring confidence in migration. My name is Michael Buchholz and I am the product owner of OpenPDM Migrate working in Darmstadt for ProStep AG in Germany. So I hope you didn't miss the first two sessions, which were about migration strategy and on the top left and risk and pitfalls on the bottom. Today, we want to talk about business domains. So anything where the business, which makes the business domain comfortable into going into the actual migration in the end. So that's our main focus for today. So we will, um, split that up into three different topics. The first topic is giving good and realistic timelines and also providing inside the timelines um, areas where the business domain can be confident with that kind of timeline. So the second thing is testing defines maturity. And the third topic will be establishing a data migration office. So when we talk about confidence, then one statement is absolutely clear. Confidence needs to start in the very early stages of the project. So it starts where you lay out the first um, project plan in front of the customer. And if we look at this project plan, this is our, let's say, blueprint plan. And I'm going to through with that once because based on that plan, you already want to win the confidence for this project at the stakeholders. And uh, let's let, let's deep dive in, into it. So of course you want to start after the project kickoff where all stakeholders are um, need to be available. You need to start a specification phase where the technical teams together with the business teams look into what actually needs to be done. During the discovery workshops, you won't go through every piece of this migration project, but here in the specification phase, you want to get deeper and want to establish the actual bits and bytes of the mapping and how you're exporting, how you're importing, things like that. In parallel to that, you're setting up the infrastructure for the team so that they have access to the corresponding systems, that the, um, that the virtual machines are available, that the VPNs are available, and so on. Then you go into sprint methodology. So sprint one, sprint two, and so on. Each sprint is usually four weeks long and um, <clears throat> incorporates three weeks of where the migration pipeline is uh, customized, is configured. And then in the last week of a sprint, there you want to perform a short um, migration test <clears throat> with limited amounts of data. So that uh, in also in that week that you can test this migrated data in the new system. So in a test system or a migration system with the business together. This will raise the actual confidence of the business users that this will work out. At the beginning, you will probably run into a lot of issues with that, but the more into the project, the more confidence you can raise on the business side, on the IT side, always doing a short sprint migration, looking at the data together with everyone so that everyone see this is the results that in the end you can work with. So once this sprinting is done, which means all the capabilities that need to be implemented and configured have been implemented and configured and also validated together with the business, then you're going into rehearsal testing. Rehearsal testing means you take the full database, do a complete migration and see whether this works out from the performance point of view, but also whether you didn't miss any kind of data conditions that need to be handled inside the migration pipeline. Furthermore, you're uh, validating the complete end-to-end -end system stability with this um, approach. Don't plan for just one um, rehearsal because each rehearsal will probably give you some information um, about the current status where you are. And it's absolutely normal that you find additional things that you want to implement or change when you're talking about the whole data that you want to migrate. So therefore, always plan for minor solution adjustments uh, in, in, in between. And I would at least plan for two rehearsals, right? This is a blueprint that has currently three of them in here, but uh, plan at least two of those. 
In parallel to that, you're setting up the migration office. We will talk about that later on. And last but not least, you're then, when everything is concluded, when everyone is clear about how the productive migration will, uh, will, will run in the end, then you're executing the actual migration. One side note to that, always plan for a separate migration infrastructure. So don't use the same infrastructure that is currently available from the deployment project. There will be a lot of data model changes. There will be a lot of general changes on this infrastructure. The data migration project needs a stable environment. So always establish um, a migration environment to migrate the data in. That makes life way easier. And when there are updates, bring it into the migration environment then on a structured way with the uh, coordination of your um, IT people. All right, let's have a look at testing defines maturity. Um, when you're planning for tests during a migration project, what you probably want to do is you want to perform these four uh, types of tests. The first test is the data integrity technical testing. That means that the data was transferred correctly. Correctly means that it's based on the current mapping specification was transferred correctly. So in a technical term. That's why this validation, these tests are executed by the technical team, not the key users. The second test is data completeness. So this is also a test which is run by the technical team and also reported then, of course, to the key users. You really want to take the numbers, what did you export, what did you import, and compare the numbers in between to make sure that all of the data that you expected were coming through the migration pipeline. And also compare that to runs that you have, did, did, that you have done previously to find out whether there are gaps. This will ensure that um, you can compare these numbers over time, right? So that's uh, a very important thing to do. The next two um, test types are all about building trust with the key users. So the first thing is data validation testing. This, is pre this needs to be prepared and also executed by the key users. Preparing these kind of data validation tests forces the key users to really look into the new data model and the new methodologies that were introduced in the new system, which will make them more confident obviously, because they, are, they, they need to dig in that kind of things. Um, so when executing these data validation testing, then it's all about validating whether the data is in the system meeting the quality expectations that the key users have, and whether this data is correct from a business perspective. So not looking at the mapping specification. Mapping specifications can be wrong, of course. It's really looking into whether the values that in the end ended up in the system, whether that's correct from a business perspective. This may lead into a lot of mapping changes when the key users see this data for the very first time. But the good thing is, usually you are already prepared um, deployment tests, so when you're building your new productive system. And most of all, you can probably, as a key user, leverage these tests or at least derive new tests from those tests. The last thing that you want to do is functional testing. This is also performed by the key users, and this is to ensure that you can, uh, that the business content continuity is given which means when you have migrated the data that you can continue working with the data and that you don't have a business disruption. So what you want to do is you want to revise the data, you want to send the data through downstream integrations and uh, really test out whether all your new methods in the new system work out. Going through all of these tests, of course, takes time, but it's the only way how to really build trust in the end with your users, with the stakeholders of the migration project, right? And when you're reporting on all of these test results, then it's transparent and reproducible and which will increase the confidence itself in the migration project. So the third topic that I would like to discuss today is the definition of the data migration office. The data migration office is an organizational role which has, as you can see here on the slide, four different kinds of responsibilities. The first thing is reporting and communication on the top left. 
So the data migration office needs to know and needs to define who are actually the stakeholders of this kind of migration from the business user side, from the IT side, from the project management side, from everyone who is concerned with that kind of migration. And for the different roles in the migration, it needs to define who needs to know what and who needs to maybe also take decisions on certain actions. So that's number one. Number two is the data migration office is the owner of the migration process itself. So everything that you're changing in the migration process needs to go through the data migration office because everything that you change might impact the templates, for example, that you give out to the corresponding stakeholders for preparation activities and these, these kind of things. So it's a very good thing to have one central role which um, really maintains the whole migration process from start to end. On the lower left, you will find KPI and information. Of course, we want to track how a currently um, how a currently executed migration performs so we want to take the kpis and we also want to lock out any kind of issues and furthermore decide where those issues need to be um, raised to so for example an issue that is concerned about source system data and needs to be fixed in the source system needs to be communicated to the stakeholders which are responsible for the source system an issue identified during migration for the target system needs to be uh, uh, forwarded to the people in the uh, in the target system and anything which is affecting the migration pipeline itself needs to be handled by the migration pipeline itself of course so the coordination of that is one of the main topics for the data migration office and also reporting on the current status of those issues on the lower right you will find execution and coordination so when you're going into the actual migration whether it's been a rehearsal migration or whether it is a productive migration these migrations need to be executed and coordinated by the data migration office. That doesn't mean that the data migration office really um, performs all uh, button presses and things like that. No, it just needs to be aware of who needs to do the next thing in the migration pipeline to ensure that the migration pipeline runs smoothly through the whole execution process. So that kind of wraps up what a um, data migration office is. And we from ProStep always um, always show that to the customer and um, discuss what these uh, data migration office is and how it needs to be staffed so that you have a smooth um, action you have, you have a smooth transition in the in the data migration project itself and that it's well known why this is required. Now here's a quick example on how such a productive migration plan could look like on a very high level. So you can see the four phases down there. You have a preliminary phase, pre-migration, migration, and post-migration. And uh, as you can see, it starts with informing all the stakeholders that there is a migration upcoming, um, assigning the tasks, following up the tasks, preparing infrastructure, and so on. And the next um, actions are then about validating the infrastructure, validating the tooling, reporting on the task statuses and so on. In the migration for phase, you will then perform the actual data migration, report on the KPIs, report on the issues, report on the finalized migration run, and in the end, assigning uh, after the migration is done any post-migration task. So this is, in a nutshell, one example that the data migration office does but of course data migration office has many more templates to work with like stakeholder lists role definitions and things like this all right so from my side these three points are very important when you go into a migration project to get the confidence of everyone involved in the migration project that it's going in the right direction and that it will be a success project in the end so but um, i just want to give you again the information uh, when you take that journey on with uh, with with prostep we do have all of these methodologies we do have the the uh, experience with how to plan the migration projects, how to execute the migration projects. And as you can see here, um, what are our first steps when we, are, um, when we are going through a migration project with you? So we have, we have question catalogs, you have heard a lot about the discovery workshops and also um, how we are then planning for the migration kickoff with a corresponding time plan. So looking forward to going through these kind of activities with you. 
So that was session three out of four. Looking forward that you're joining as well the last session. See you then.